Hi, my name is Matt Schatz. I am the author of the play, The Past, A Present Yet to Come, an origin story of A Christmas Carol. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this play, please listen to this conversation. Uh, when did I first fall in love with with the, with, with theater and and uh, and why did I have to be part of the theater world? I think you know I think what I fell in love with was was initially was writing. Um, so uh, you know from an early age, writing was something that I did really well. Um, I was also like specifically like a, a good uh, rhymer and I could write like little poems and 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 raps and songs and things like that. So I knew you know I wanted to be. Um, involved I knew I should be a writer in in some way and I wanted to figure out a way that I could make a living as a writer as I started to you know get into high school and got older um uh I loved movies so uh my first instinct was to um be a screenwriter um so I went to uh college and studied screenwriting and I took to it and I really liked it um uh but uh sort of towards the end of my uh time there undergrad I started to sort of think about plays and and it seemed to me that you know, movies are really is quite a young medium and it was like 100 years old. Um, and I was like sort of interested in sort of like, uh, uh, you know, the history of, of, of where it all started and, 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 and drama and it's sort of, you know, thousands of years old. Uh, so I started reading plays. Uh, you know, I would I would just go to the, you know whatever Barnes and Noble or Borders and and buy whatever plays they had published, and I started reading them. And I think you know I I at first I was really interested, like I loved the movie Glen for Glen Glen Gary Glen Ross, and I read that play, and then I uh, 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 you know really got interested in playwriting. Um, so I like in senior year of college, I. Uh, I worked at a pharmacy. I wrote a play about working at the pharmacy. Uh, I sent it to a couple of grad schools, got into one or got into a bunch and got, you know, got in and ended up going to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and then suddenly I was calling lots of a playwright, uh, uh, you know, and so I, I wasn't the kind of person that did a lot of acting, though, when I was younger, I did sort of, you know, I went to theater camp and did things like that. But I wasn't, you know, as sort of um, puberty hit, I got kind of self-conscious and didn't want to be on stage anymore, but I still wanted to sort of be part of it and be a writer. Uh, so yeah, that that's sort of how uh, I got into theater. Um, and I also think I liked the idea that um, people knew playwrights' names, you know, you know, you, you, you could, you, you go, you know, a film director's name, but you don't often know the screenwriter's name. So I think I like the idea that, you know, they say, okay, this is, this is a, a Neil Simon play. This is a Wendy Wasserstein play or, or whatever, or whatever. And, and, uh, and often you say, this is a Martin Scorsese movie or something. So I like that idea sort of as, a, um, uh, just, you know, uh, as, uh, with an ego and as uh, my, my own vanity. I like the idea of people knowing, uh, I sort of cared more about that than I did making money, which is stupid. Um, uh, I've come to find out, but, uh, but I still really care about theater and theater still is like the thing, even though I do work in TV and I write screenplays, I write for TV, um, theater is still the thing I care most about for some strange, stupid reason. When did, when did I truly fall in love with playwriting from the, you know, um, from the first time I think that I, uh, that I read my first play, I think I thought to myself, you know, I can do this, you know, this is something I can do. I like, I, 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 I'm very auditory and I like the, I like I, words and, 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 and the sound that words make and the rhythms of speech. Um, uh, uh, so I think, you know, from reading my first plays and trying to write them and sort of seeing actors and people that are, uh, or even other writers read them, hearing them out loud. Uh, that's when I really, really said, "Oh, this is exciting! You know, this is this is this is a fun thing to do. And if you can call this work, then that's then that's a fun way to sort of have a have a job." Um, so I think you know, from the get go, you know, of course, you're always nervous, and you and you and you um and you and sometimes you hate what you've written, um, but more often than not, I you know, I it, it always thrills me to hear have people you know read what I've what I've what I've written aloud or perform what I've written aloud. Um, so yeah, it's 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 it's. Uh, you know, it's it's something, um, and I kind of kept doing it. So, and I've been doing it for I don't know twenty five years now or something. So, uh, uh, you know, it's 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 obviously there's something I get out of it. Why is the theater experience such a unique format and such an? Uh, I just think it, it's you know the the element of something being live and and sort of, you know, having to sort of understand something in real time uh, with a group of of of, of other people in the audience and you're all sort of experiencing this communal thing, uh, even if it's five, 10 other people. Um, it's to me, it's always different than, than either even watching a TV show or seeing a movie. Um, there's something, um, really, uh, uh, you know, exciting about it. And it's also like ephemeral. You can't capture it. It could be different from, you know, from one night to the next, um, uh, you know, and so it's always, it's like always, a, uh, you know, it feels like always like a, a, a tightrope walk. 
um uh you know and i can't you know it's like that that the moment like you know when the lights go down you're sitting in in the in, in, in the theater and, and you're waiting for something to happen uh you know the thing that happens it could be the most boring thing ever but there's that moment of sort of anticipation it's almost like when you go you know uh uh first going uphill on a roller coaster you know uh, uh it, it, the, so there's a lot of excitement there uh i've um you know i also just you know uh i rarely leave the house so it's it's if, if you're going to leave the house uh it's always it's always a nice thing to go and and sit in an audience and uh and be told a story because you know stories are what makes us human so where did the idea for the past uh, present yet to come come from i think so i was looking back at my emails i see that it was in 2021 i um i i, I so it was two years ago christmas time maybe around this time two years ago uh i would think i was walking taking a walk with my with my um uh, baby, my now I have two, but first baby. Uh, 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 and I saw, I think ads. I think it was for the uh, what maybe CTG's a Christmas Carol with maybe with Bradley Whitford. Uh, and I started thinking about it, and I started thinking about how I really like a Christmas Carol. Um, I've always liked it, and I've seen many iterations, and I've read it, and I've seen you know you've seen I've seen the Muppets, and I remember I grew up with the I grew up with the um uh, the Disney one where Mickey plays you know uh, Bob Cratchit. Uh, uh, and I've always liked it. But to me, there's always something that like I didn't buy about it. And I think the thing that I didn't buy about it is is the magic of it. And I think that I have a hard time um, uh, believing in magic, uh, uh, whether it be a, a story on stage. It just never really resonates with me. Um, the kind of magic that I believe in and I think is real is the magic of art and the magic of the theater. So I had this idea that, you know, what if the whole thing that Scrooge experiences was a play being put on for his benefit that he was unaware of. Um, and I love the idea, you know, obviously I'm a theater maker and a, and a, and a, and a playwright. And, uh, and so I love the idea of a bunch of people getting together to basically put on a show uh, for one audience member, Scrooge, to sort of try to change him. Um, so that was how it started. Uh, and I initially, um, because I write in TV and I like to feed my family and film, I initially had the idea to pitch it as a, as a movie. And I did, I had a production company that was, you know, all last year uh, interested in it. We pitched it a bunch of places uh, uh, and it got some good, nice responses. And I wrote a big pitch and everything for it. Uh, I think, you know, there, but there was that uh, one with like, a, I didn't see it, but it was, there was like a modern day retelling of A Christmas Carol with like, who was like, it was a Ryan Reynolds or something. Um, uh, I try not to see anything. Uh, 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 and and um, and and the sort of the the feeling was like the, that one maybe that wasn't doing wasn't killing it at the box office maybe. And then also it's like we've sort of had our you know we, maybe we've had a lot of it that we have it every year. We all go see it every year. Uh, so so I was like you know well instead of me pitching it and I had you know a pretty big company attached and everything and maybe a possibly exciting uh, actor to play uh, Charles Dickens that was attached. But I said let me write it as a play to sort of a, as a proof of concept uh, almost. Uh, um, uh, and also it's fun to write a play. So I decided to write it as a play. Of course, the play turned out totally different than the movie would have turned out, you know, three, just three actors and sort of like, uh, all the characters that I imagined for the movie are sort of off screen and all this stuff. But, uh, but, uh, but, you know, so that was how that began. Um, uh, and of course I, I, like I said before, I love theater is my true love. So, uh, sort of imagining as a play, uh, first, uh, and maybe, maybe it's the may, may, way it was meant to be, maybe some at some point in the future i'll try to make it into a movie or something that was the genesis of the idea yeah and i also like um uh, at the same time i had this other idea for another uh dickens related story there's this story i was wanted to write a musical um about this true story of dickens um who uh had this uh, uh tenant later in his life a jewish woman who uh took issue with the um with with the uh, uh, the character of Fagin, the Jew, and Oliver Twist, uh, and sort of he was sort of converted to, from sort of an anti-Semite to, to less of one. Um, so there was this, I wanted to write sort of a, a, a they, they write these letters, I wanted to write sort of an epistolary musical uh, song cycle or something, because I'm a composer as well, I write musicals. Uh, so I didn't do that, and I sort of incorporated that uh, theme also into this play. So it was sort of like two Dickens things in one. Um, so yeah, I think that's where it came from. So uh, it's about um, a young man named Fred, uh, an entrepreneur, you know, he, he, and he's from the from the the, the Dickens story, uh, uh, Scrooge's nephew. Um, he um, is a young uh, aspiring businessman, family man. Um, he wants to uh, he has a, a, a nightcap business, uh, hats, not drinks that he's trying to sort of get uh, funding for. Um, uh, 
uh, and he has this idea um, uh, to play a Christmas trick on his uncle. Um, uh, he sees a, he sees this play called uh, The Goblins Who Sold a Sexton, uh, uh, which was based on a, a story um, uh, from Charles Dickens' uh, uh, the Pickwick Papers, I believe. Uh, he sees this production and he has this idea to sort of put on this play with a similar story. The Goblin stole a, uh, the Goblins Who Stole a Sexton is like very similar to A Christmas Carol. It's like, you know, goblins come in the middle of night and and it's a sexton and he's got to change his ways and they show him the past and the future. Um, uh, uh, so he has this idea uh, to, uh, to put on this play to sort of uh, make his uncle Scrooge to sort of has become this sort of bad man over the t- over time uh he has this idea to put on a play to sort of change him um and he really loves his uncle because his uncle is a businessman and he's and sort of he aspires to be this great you know uh rich entrepreneurial businessman uh so to do so uh he 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 he, he uh meets with the sort of the impresario impresario uh female producer uh who produced the, the goblins play um uh gets her on board and then uh to write it uh, they they hook up with this guy Charles Dickens Charles Boz Dickens uh, uh, who's who's maybe you know not doing so great he had a couple hits and he's kind of a little, little bit a little bit down on his luck and and, and needs the dough uh, uh, so they um, so they get him to write it uh, and then you know conflict of all various kinds ensues uh, whether you know like anytime you try to put on a play uh, 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 conflict happens and in this case you know. Uh, Dickens, you know, doesn't it doesn't love uh, this this producer who produced the other play. It turns out without his knowing and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, and Dickens, in this, in my version, is kind of like this womanizing, mumbly um, uh, uh, character who you think will be eloquent, but uh, uh, only writes eloquently, doesn't speak or act eloquently uh, or uh, or in a dignified manner. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 about uh, them trying to, to 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 put on this play and and all the uh, crazy wacky things that can happen when when three people get the idea uh, for some reason to put on a theatrical production. What are the main themes of the play? Uh, there's sort of, you know, the expected themes of sort of redemption and sort of, uh, 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 you know, looking at our past and growing and 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 sort of the themes that are in, 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 in the source material, as it were, the a Christmas Carol. But also... Um, uh, there's a theme of, of 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 you know what art can do, um, um, how how an artist takes real life and has to change it and turn it into art, which is a theme that I think a lot about and, and write a lot about. Um, there's sort of uh, 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 redemption and uh, of all the characters, they all sort of have to make changes. Uh, there's also this you know this theme um, of of sort of uh, Dickens. Uh, uh, anti-Semitism, uh, uh, or at the probably Jew hatred, which probably would be the, the term at, at, at the time, uh, uh, you know, that I did, when I wrote it, it's always timely, but it seems even more uh, timely now, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, really about sort of um, the power of stories uh, and, the, and, and, you know, and why we, why we make theater and, and why we make art. And, and if the point of art is to change us, or just to educate us, or or just to have, or just to entertain us, or all three, or one, or one of those, uh, and sort of those all those questions, uh, yeah. And it's just also just about you know three people uh, becoming friends. Some people say that um, puns are the lowest form of of, of, of humor, and uh, and the people that say that I, I find to be really unfunny. Uh, I actually love puns. Um, uh, I love you know. Work, you know, you know, sort of wordplay in all my work. I think there's there's a lot of wordplay. I try not to make it, you know, too self conscious. But you know, when you're dealing with writers, you're dealing with people, uh, you know, who are, who are smart and and folks in Victorian England who uh, who, who 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 are people of letters. Uh, you, you 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 can have some fun with 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 wordplay. Uh, so there's there's that stuff. There's that stuff in the play. Uh, you know, there's a lot of you know because of because we have Dickens as a, as a main character. Uh, you know, he's sort of, uh, and he's, and he's, you know, no stranger to wordplay, though he claims he doesn't like, like puns, but there's puns in his stuff. So, uh, you know, who's lying? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I just, I, I just love, I love that stuff. You know, I'm a lyricist, a musical theater writer too. And, uh, and, 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 you know, I just, nothing delights me more than, than, you know, than, than, a, than, a, than a, 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 a sort of, uh, joke based on, 
you know, misunderstandings of words or, 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 you know, even rhyming words and, uh, or surprising turns of phrase, uh, those things are sort of like, uh, in my, in my, I've, and I have a mind that sort of leaps at puns and, 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 and rhymes and things like that. So, uh, uh, so it's going to be, I enjoy it. So, uh, my thought and hope is that an audience enjoys it as well. Um, and I think some people do. What do I want the audience to get out of my play? I want them to feel like it was worth them, you know, worth them leaving the house for the night. Uh, I want them to be entertained. I want them to uh, to maybe be moved. Uh, I want them to laugh. Uh, and um, and I want them to maybe leave the theater uh, also asking important and unanswerable questions, which I think is our our responsibility as theater artists is to make is to make our our audience ask important and unanswerable questions. Why should people come to see this play? Uh, if you're a fan of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, uh, I think you'll enjoy this play. And if you're not a fan, I think you'll also enjoy it. Uh, if you're sick of it, um, uh, it, it takes the sort of a story we all know and love uh, and have known for all, most of our lives, most of us probably, uh, and sort of. Uh, uh, turns it on its ear and and attempts to sort of uh give an origin story uh to this to, to this thing to the origin story of Christmas really you know when we think about Christmas uh in America and probably and I guess in England uh we 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 may think of the religious aspects but you also may think of Dickens a Christmas Carol if you if you like that stuff you'll enjoy it you know I think if you're if you're sort of thinking about sort of what this play is I kind of sometimes think it's like uh, you know, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Tom Stoppard's uh, or the the movie Shakespeare in Love, uh, you know what what Shakespeare in Love sort of you know uh, uh, does for Shakespeare. I'm sort of attempting to do for Dickens in 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 this play. So that's some that's that that, that if that's a a way to think about the the show, maybe that's helpful. Hi, my name is Matt Schatz. I am the author of the play The Past, A Present Yet to Come, and I hope you'll come see uh, this new take on A Christmas Carol.